Hi, and welcome to the video companion for Chapter 4 for Head First JavaScript Programming. In this chapter, we're going to look at our first complex data type, the array. And an array is a complex type because, unlike primitives like strings and numbers, you can store multiple values in an array. Another way to describe an array is as a data structure because it's used to store data, usually data that's related in some way, like ice cream flavors or high temperatures or perhaps even battleship locations. We start the chapter with a plea for help from Bubbles R Us, which is the latest bubble solution making startup. They've run a bunch of tests on some sample bubble solutions and they want us to help them figure out which is the best solution. Now we've got a whole bunch of bubble solution test results here so we're using an array to store the data. But before we get too caught up in helping them, we need to step back and take a look at exactly what an array is and how it works. Now, one of the things that might trip you up with arrays is this idea of a variable holding multiple values. The key is to understand that an array holds each of these multiple values at a unique location within the array and all the values are stored in a specific order. Each location has an index, which is just a number, and we step you through how all this works. Pay close attention to the index numbers of the values in the array, because they start at zero, not one. So that's something to spend a little time wrapping your head around. Another important piece to understand when using arrays is the length property. You'll use this property frequently when you work with arrays, so it's important to understand what it is and how it works. The key with length is to remember that because the first index of an array is zero, the length is always one greater than the last index of an array. Again, spend some quality time understanding this because it will really help you when we start working with the data in arrays. Before getting back to Bubbles R Us, we have a quick little business application that we build called the Phrasomatic. This is the next killer app for generating startup slogans, so you'll definitely want to get this working so you can use it for your own business ideas. Okay, the Bubbles R Us team has a whole slew of new test results, so we need to get started working on the report that the CEO wants. Here, you're going to learn a fundamental concept in working with arrays, and that is how to iterate through an array. And all that means is going through each of the values in the array. This is where the power of an array really comes through. Because you can use iteration to go through each item in an array in order and operate on the data in the array. This is something you'll do in just about every program you'll write. So really think carefully about how iteration works. We first show you how to use while loops to iterate with arrays. And you learned about while loops way back in chapter one. But there's actually a better way to iterate with arrays, and that's with a for loop. So we step you through what a for loop is and how to set it up correctly. Then you'll use that to complete the first step of the Bubbles R Us report. And of course, you get to listen in on an argument between while loop and for loop about who is better. In the first part of the report, all we're doing is displaying the bubble test scores in the console. But the CEO wants more than that. He actually wants us to operate on the data in the array to find things like the highest scoring bubble solutions. So you'll get lots of practice with arrays and the data stored in them as you create the report. There are a couple of different ways to add values to an array. So we take you through those and show you how to add values to an empty array so you can find all the bubble solutions that got the highest test score and store them in the new array. You'll have to read the chapter to find out which bubble solutions had the highest scores. Now, back in chapter three, you learned all about functions. You learned that functions are a great way to organize your code, particularly if you want to reuse code. So far in this chapter, our code is not organized that much. And so to organize the code a bit better and to more easily allow us to reuse the code to, to do computations like find a high score or find the best bubble solutions, we're going to refactor or reorganize the code to use functions. Now you might think you're done at this point, but no, the CEO has one more request. 
He wants to find out which of the highest scoring bubble solutions is the most cost effective to produce. So the last part of the chapter is all about figuring that out. I won't give away the answer, so read the chapter to find out. And of course, as always, it's a good idea to do the crossword at the end to help it all sink in. And that's it until we see you in chapter five.